The introspective Submarine EP doesn't loom large in the Alex Turner canon, but it might just be one of the most important releases he put out. Ballads like Hiding Tonight and It's Hard to Get Around in the Wind were written specifically for the film, which came out in 2010 and was based on the 2008 novel by Welsh writer Joe Dunthorne. It's an awkward coming of age story set in Wales about small town adolescent angst, young love and post-industrial malaise. The novel is a good read for fans of coming of age literature. Think of it as a catcher in the rye for millennials. Nobody came of age faster than Alex Turner in the 2000s after Arctic Monkeys blew up with I Bet You Look Good on the Dance Floor and the film's director Richard Ayoade sensed Turner could be a good fit for the film soundtrack. He'd already tapped into similar themes of small town life on songs like Fluorescent Adolescent, Riot Van and Mardi Bum. But a movie soundtrack would be a different ball game altogether and a total departure. When Turner got the call for Submarine, he was fresh off a world tour supporting Arctic Monkeys' third album, 2009's Humbug, which I covered in one of my early videos on this channel. It was a hard rock beast produced by Queens of the Stone Age's Josh Homme, with its sludgy, dense tracks dividing fans. Turner was living in New York, and it was clear the sweetly sad songs he was writing were going in an opposite direction to the more macho humbug. He said, I had some tunes that I'd been sitting around playing. I never thought they were really going to be Arctic Monkeys tunes, just because it were just me picking at an acoustic guitar, and that's definitely not what Monkeys is about. It were just songs that I didn't really know what they were going to become. Ayoade was probably best known at the time for playing computer nerd Moss in UK sitcom The IT Crowd. He was already friends with Turner after directing the video for Fluorescent Adolescent, the second single from Favourite Worst Nightmare in 2007. It was the start of a fruitful working relationship and Ayoade would direct two more Arctic Monkeys videos for the humbug singles Cornerstone and Crying Lightning, a concert film and two videos for The Last Shadow Puppets. After being chosen to direct his first feature film with Submarine, he thought about giving Turner a call, but he was worried he'd be too busy with other projects. Before settling on original songs for the soundtrack, the initial concept for Turner was he'd perform cover versions of artists like Scott Walker, John Cale and Soros Gainsbourg. The Arctic Monkeys frontman said a film soundtrack wasn't something he thought he'd feel comfortable doing, or even qualified for, he said. And now, if somebody tomorrow asked us to do one, I don't think I'm the man for that job really. But this was an exception. I mates with Richard, and the way it came about, it were like a natural process. Turner was still in his early 20s when he wrote the five tracks that make up Submarine. A personal favourite is Glass in the Park, which is an evocative tale of unrequited teenage lust, with some lovely turns of phrase. I hadn't listened to the EP in quite a few years before researching this video, and it struck me how much higher his vocal key was compared to the more baritone croon of recent Arctic Monkeys albums. The EP was recorded in April 2010 at One Inch Studios in London, with frequent Arctic Monkeys collaborator James Ford serving as producer. Avant-garde musician Owen Pallett was brought in for the strings on Piledriver Waltz, a song which would be re-recorded for the next Arctic Monkeys album, Suck It and See, which was released just a few months after Submarine in 2011. Former choral guitarist and Domino label bait, Bill Ryder-Jones also helped out on guitar. And Submarine is a companion piece of sorts to his lush 2011 orchestral solo debut album, If. The website Pitchfork praised Turner's lyrics and said, In playing up the contradictions of youth without being cloying about the real feelings behind them, Turner's songs feel sharply observed and very true to life, even at their most lyrically impenetrable. The film premiered in late 2010, with Ayoade going out of his way to praise Turner for his contribution, with his songs adding a layer of pathos to lead character Oliver's teenage woes. He said, it was just like getting good stuff for free. I did nothing and it made my film a million times better. 
That's the dream collaboration. You do nothing and the other person is great. That's how I want every film to be from now on. Alex's music was the thing I worried about least. The film of Submarine has gone down as a bit of a cult classic in recent years. Surely in part due to the success of Alan Turner's melancholic soundtrack, which has racked up 300 million streams on Spotify. It signposted his fans to a film that probably would have been forgotten. And even though it remains the only solo release that Turner has ever put out, it's more than just a curio. The acoustic based collection would also echo into his future and acted as a stepping stone to the film soundtrack inspired Tranquility Base Hotel and Casino, which came out in 2018, and 2022's The Car. <laughs> <laughs>